Hey everyone, Christopher Beast here. So in today's video, I really want to talk about City MP, um, the multiplayer mod for SignalOS. What has happened as we've been working on development on it, and really talk more about the real networking process in general, and, and exactly what is necessary for the peer-to-peer -peer connection that we're aiming for with City MP to be fully possible. So the earliest thing to really talk about is like Artle. Uh, at a simplest level, we are trying to get this peer one, so player one, to be able to connect to a second player. And in rational mind, we go, oh, that's got to be really simple. You know, you just connect this to this and this to this. It, it can't be that hard. And that, my good friends, is exactly what I thought until I actually tried doing this, because this is, this is not possible. So there's a lot of different ways that you can connect to computers. Most of them are extremely complicated and very violent. One of the ways is a protocol called the UDP protocol. And the UDP protocol is basically taking a port on your computer. Now, a port is not a physical thing. A port is a network connection. And it's patching that port so that way it can act as a place that can receive information and send information. So the UDP protocol was first used in the very early uh, builds of CDMP in the Widgrin networking library. This library essentially used UDP ports to connect the peer to itself. And actually, that's not really an accurate diagram. Let me get a better diagram here. What it was more so doing was something like this, where each computer had a version of Widgrin running on it, each computer connected to its version of Widgrin, and then Widgrin would communicate with itself across two PCs. There are a couple issues with this thing. First, Widgrin is like nine years old, um, which meant documentation, updates, runtimes were all extremely out of date, extremely just not working in some regards, and it, it was overall just a massive headache. The other issue with Widgrin is Widgrin has very poor testability and scalability when it comes to .NET's framework. So when I actually ran Widgrin on my own computer to do a UDP test to see if this idea even worked, I found that the connection between Widgrin hosts was actually impossible in current programming. Like it, it wouldn't connect. With that in mind, I decided to replace Widgrim and I actually built my own UDP library. Uh, I called this Monkey Library. And Monkey Library, what it managed to do, UDP Library, Monkey Library, what Monkey Library did manage to do is build a connection between these two hosts with a giant asterisk. If this was it, then we would have CDMP demo would be the name of this video, not how CDMP is going. The, the issue with this UDP connection is that it's a UDP connection. And if you're like me, you have no idea what the hell that means. Essentially, as I said before, UDP is the opening of a port. The problem is when you open a port, that does not mean that people across the internet can connect to it. In fact, it only means that LAN connections are possible. So what this version of CDMP did manage to do was make it so that if you are on an LAN or local connection, basically two people on the same internet who are close to each other, they could connect via Monkey Library. However, I doubt there's very many people who actually want to randomly just connect with their friend who lives down the street. So recognizing that the use cases for this was really low, well, I did some research into how exactly we could bridge the connection between the UDP connections and the internet. What I found was this idea called UPNP. And UPNP is basically this system, uh, which is gonna represent it with this like box here, that would allow for these UDP requests to create a connection such that you could do this. Problems. UPNP libraries, there are a couple of them, are all very verbose which would mean adding them to CDMP would add a lot of code, and, and that means a lot of locations where shit could go horribly wrong. The other issue 
that UPnP possessed is that it's not a guarantee. And I was looking at the documentation with UPnP, and it's something that it could easily have been, I think, 20, 30 hours into building this connection, and then it just doesn't work for everyone's use case. So I decided that that was a bad idea. It's not the best idea to put all of our eggs into a basket that even its own documentation is saying might not work. So getting rid of UPnP, I decided to work with a different idea, and this was called the turn protocol. The turn protocol uh, allows your PC to bypass your router and send a message via UDP ports. This kind of seems like exactly what we want. However, there's there's a bit of a, a caveat, again, again, once again, if there wasn't a caveat, then this video would have a different title. The code turn, uh, the, the turn thing required a library called coturn. Coturn was written in C. Coturn is what's fueling this connection, and in order for it to run, would essentially have to run from the host's PC. And in this system, it would basically turn one of the hosts into a dedicated server machine for the other peer. Not only is that a problem because it creates a kind of unequal balance of power between the two things, which may cause latency, the bigger issue, and the reason we de I decided not to do this system, is that Coturn is an ass to set up. Like, just being so frank, I'm not going to ask every single user of SIGIMP to go through a goddamn awful tutorial just to install the server mechanism. That's crazy. But Coturn really was kind of the best option for a little bit, because it really does do the job of connecting the UDP libraries. So I did some more research, because you know, this, this, was, this was not viable, and really the whole system seemed to be problematic. And I learned about something called WebGL. And WebGL is essentially a way that hosts on the internet communicate. To, to make this a little bit simpler for, for the non-programming big nerd people who are watching, when you connect to each other over a platform like Discord or a platform, certain platforms, your connections are not always hosted server-side. In a lot of cases they are, but sometimes they're connected via peer-to-peer. -peer. And in these instances where it is peer-to-peer, -peer, all the server does is act as a relay point such that you can connect. And that is the WebGL framework. For C Sharp, because that's what CDMP is built in, there is a Microsoft C Sharp WebGL framework that could be used. The problem with it is it's very, very verbose. It's very large, and it'd be a lot to run. So in this theoretical system, if we were to use um, WebGL, we would essentially have to have a interconnectivity system, which would parse the WebGL from the C-sharp, into, let me just update this diagram so it's a little bit more active for those who I'm spitting a lot of words and just kind of need a nice little picture because you're so real for that. The interconnectivity would then patch us into the WebGL code, which would both be running on each native client. And the WebGL code would actually uh, obtain the connection via this idea called piping. Here is really why I didn't use WebGL for C Sharp. Um, piping, I, I looked at some of the scales, I looked at some of the documentation about speeds, is simply too slow for what we're looking for. The connection between uh, the, the two peers simply wouldn't be fast enough and it could have actually really bad runtime issues. And rather than me build this whole entire system and then get to the end of it and go, okay, it's all unusable because the piping is too slow and we have to find a native host, I decided not to do that. An alternative to piping though, that I do want to mention before anyone mentions it who randomly might know a lot about this, is I could have a hosted server. But the problem with that would be is that CDMP would now cost money for me to run, which would kind of create a pressure for me to make more money off of it. And uh, I don't like that. I'd rather not be trying to take every single dollar you have. So with that all in mind, it kind of became clear that a lot of these simple ways, like UDP, UPnP, WebGL, were kind of off the options. You, they, they weren't things I could reliably do. And that gets me to the idea that I'm currently decided on, and I'm currently trying to implement. And this idea is definitely the most batshit, but to achieve unconventional results, you have to go with unconventional methods. So there's something called 
um, gun.js. And the way gun.js works is it runs itemized networks on each component peer that are able to communicate to each other. So they essentially create a small little server that is able to communicate with each other. However, uh, those who are really good at programming might notice the, the .js. This is a web client that runs in JavaScript, not C Sharp. So to connect to it, we kind of have to get creative. So first we have to build this gun.js server and then encapsulating the gun.js, or I guess I'll draw it like this. I mean, yeah, shrink. I'm not the best at visual descriptions. Uh, encapsulating the, the what's running the gun.js is a type of C-sharp code that allows interop with JS. So we run this, the peer runs this code this code executes the creation of the server, and then the server parses information back to a JS C-sharp interop, ah. and that gets back to the peer. And that essentially creates this little square, I guess is the shape, of information exchange. The benefits of this, this method, even though it's, it's very batshit, is it would allow pretty low latency um, because gun.js servers are actually pretty good. It would allow for it to be completely free and pretty much peer-based, which was the role the whole time. The downsides of this are um, it's it's a bit manic, as as the diagram clearly shows. But um, yeah, that's a entire rundown of every single network service system that I've considered implementing for uh, CDMP. It's definitely a lot, um, a lot's going on, but hopefully this system will actually work and we'll be able to release CDMP in the near future. And let me just color code it for those who like colors. So yeah, that's uh, that's gonna be the, the system we use for CDMP. And for those who are questioning, this will then run into a parser. Actually, there's kind of another step here. Let me diagram that out. So that way we're completely understanding here. There is something called the message handler. It's written in C sharp, so that takes in messages. And then we have the message sender, which is also written in C sharp. And these essentially allow Unity to connect and relay information about the state changes from the peer. So yeah, that's uh that's essentially how a CDMP code works. It's it's a lot, but hopefully it works and hopefully we're able to get CDMP released in the near future. Appreciate y'all for your patience in waiting for CDMP to be finished. And I just wanted to update y'all on what the status of the project was. If you have any questions, be sure to ask in the chat down uh, in the comments down below. And I'll also have a testing session in my Discord, which is also linked below. So we'll be testing every single part of this. But until my next update, this has been Christopher Beast updating y'all on CDMP. See y'all next time.